Hey YouTube, Chris here with Shiny New Gadgets. I want to do a quick video today on my thoughts on the Surface Pro uh, featuring Qualcomm's new Snapdragon X Elite processors. I uh, picked this thing up uh, about a week ago when they first came out and I also purchased the Surface Laptop 7. I have a previous video on that. Uh, this particular device has, has quickly become one of my favorites and I'll explain uh, why hear it throughout the video. In terms of my previous experience with surfaces, I've, I've owned almost all of them. Uh, the surfaces in the past did have a couple uh, issues that I think, you know, resulted them not being as popular devices as they could have been. Uh, the biggest being the battery life was not great and they got warm. So when you have those two things going on and something that's really meant to be a, a truly mobile device, uh, it, it, it just doesn't work out so well. So it's been a hindrance. Uh, they've all been powered by Intel chips in the past on the x86 platform. And usually for whatever reason, Microsoft put a generation old uh, chip inside of them. So you would have the 13th gen Intel chip, but they would put the 12th gen Intel chip inside the surfaces. So that's obviously not the case here because everybody that uh, produced one of these Qualcomm uh, Snapdragon X Elite uh, laptops or tablets uh, is using the latest and greatest. The things I like about surfaces just in kind of in general is the form factor. So you basically have a, a almost like a notebook like look here, it's super easy. You just kind of throw it in the passenger seat of your car, uh, you know, throw it in your bag. It's very light, uh, but it also has this kickstand that goes uh, pretty far. So you can almost set it up flat, go all the way up. And then it has a keyboard that is detachable. So unfortunately, uh, Microsoft does not include the keyboard with the purchase of a Surface. It is an optional accessory, uh, although one that I would highly recommend, and I'll get to that here a little bit later in the video. Uh, the other thing that uh, a Surface does that kind of sets it apart is it's all touchscreen. So I suppose if a person wanted to, you could, you know, 86 the the keyboard and just use the, the actual screen itself as a tablet, it's probably not gonna be the best experience. I, I would highly recommend against that. You can use the previous Surface Pro uh, keyboards with the new devices, uh, but this new Flex keyboard does have a, a couple neat tricks that I'll show you. This particular Surface uh, is powered by, like I said, Snapdragon X Elites. It does have 32 gigabytes of memory, a one terabyte hard drive, it also comes with this beautiful OLED screen. So this is the first year surfaces have come with OLED. Uh, the base model, and you have to be careful about this, still comes with an LCD screen. Uh, after experiencing the, the OLED on this, I would definitely not recommend the LCD. The OLED is just that good. So I would for sure go with that. The, the device itself was $2,000 in, in the spec that I have here. And then I did buy the keyboard and pen bundle. Uh, I'll, I'll sh the, the pen is hard for me to get out and I honestly don't really ever use the pen. I have an S24 Ultra and I never use the pen on that either. So I guess I'm just not a pen guy, uh, but the keyboard and the pen together were $450. If you elect to just go with the keyboard, you're looking at 350. Uh, you can always buy, like I said, those uh, older versions of the keyboard for less money. I've seen them for like $170. Uh, but this flex keyboard is awesome and I'll just I'll just tell you why right now you could always detach the keyboard before but the big difference this year is you can actually use this keyboard detached now it might seem like a gimmick at first but as a realtor I often have you know clients sitting at the table with me and we're going over documents together and I can sit here off to the side and I can manipulate the computer just like if I had the keyboard attached it works so fluidly. Uh, the battery on here I'll automatically charge when it's connected to the surface. And you would be surprised at how much this can come in handy. So if I'm at a, a restaurant or a bar or something like that, just even using it personally, to be able to have my screen wherever I want it and then my keyboard as far away from that screen as I want it is just money. And this even folds in a little bit so you can kind of get it to pop up to make it a little bit more comfortable. But I'm telling you, once I discovered this on the surface, it just made it go up even another notch. So 
Uh, that flex keyboard, 350 sucks. It's, it is expensive, yes. But when you get something like this, I mean, it's just so sweet. You, you basically have a Bluetooth uh, keyboard wherever you go and it's automatically attached to the device. Awesome. The screen itself is kind of like iPad quality level. Now it's not going to get as bright as the iPads, but in terms of like fluidity of using it and you know zooming, uh, it's, it's awesome. The bezels are a little bigger, especially on the top and the bottom. Nothing that bothers me, but just thought I'd point that out. Sometimes when you're using a, a piece of hardware like this as a tablet, having some bezels isn't the worst thing in the world because it'll kind of keep you from having those you know, phantom touches over on the side. It is a glossy screen though. Uh, it's not nearly as glossy to me at least the, as the Surface laptop that I did the video on uh, last week. Uh, but you, you'll notice the gloss. Now it hasn't been an issue. I've been able to use it outside, inside, uh, any other way without a problem. But just so you know, it, it has got some gloss to it. All computers, PC computers, so Windows-based computers up to this point uh, have been running on x86. So think Intel and AMD for as long as I've been a computer guy, that, that's who's been powering my Windows computers. Well, that's a big difference this year as Qualcomm's kind of entered into the race and Microsoft has put a ton of effort into making that work. One of the things that they've done is since these new computers run on ARM, so you have x86 and then you have ARM, which is the same architecture that uh, powers all of our cell phones now. So whether you're walking around with an Android phone or an iPhone, that is powered based off of uh, ARM architecture. It's supposed to be more efficient, uh, meaning generate less heat and have a longer battery life. But in order to make all of the old applications work that weren't specifically built for ARM, uh, Microsoft developed a piece of software called Prism. Now, Prism is very similar to what Apple did with Rosetta when they came out with the M-series MacBooks. And by and large, it just kind of works behind the scenes to emulate uh, those x86 apps. So especially early on here where we don't have all developers on board on making native ARM versions, it was critical for Microsoft to get this right. And I, I'm, I'm happy to say, I think for the most part they did. Uh, when you're loading up an application that you know is not ARM based, uh, the experience to me and to the end user uh, is pretty much flawless. You, you would never know. Uh, the only way that you would know is when you downloaded it, there wasn't an ARM version that you could get. Uh, so it just, like I said, runs in the background. It's not something that you have to start up or anything like that. And I, I'm, I've been pretty impressed with how, how well Prism works overall. So Microsoft put a ton of effort into it and, and it shows. Uh, as far as speed on this thing, it, you know, again, for what I use it for, which would be Outlook, you know, all those office apps, uh, emails, browsing the web, I, I handle a lot of things like our MLS system for realtors is all web-based. So any of that kind of stuff is, is just flawless. And the way you can kind of think about it is when you have a, a newer age phone, whether it be an iPhone or an Android phone, when you open up an app, it just kind of instantly opens. Uh, that's the same experience here. Now, uh, I would say, if, and this is gonna be a little controversial, I actually feel like the fluidity of those types of apps on this computer exceeds my Intel and AMD desktop, which is about as top of the line as a person could buy right now. So there is there is something special about ARM. And you know I think an average person would look at this computer and start using it and be like, wow, this, this thing is fast. And, and it's true. Battery life. So, the stamina on this thing is is awesome. So I would easily be able to get through a whole day. So imagine about eight hours of doing the type of work that I mentioned before. Uh, in addition to the battery life being great, it doesn't get hot. I mean, I'm, it's it stays very cool. Um, all of these new Snapdragon laptops do have fans in them. However. I, I really never hear the fan. I mean, honestly, I, you, you could probably have told me they didn't have one and I wouldn't know. In terms of the battery, another little surprise that I wasn't expecting is how fast this thing can charge. So Microsoft includes this proprietary kind of like MagSafe connector over on the side that you know works with a magnet. Uh, but then you also have two USB-C ports here on the left and those both can charge. And I can plug this into my Tesla. Let's say I had half a battery uh, and just kind of leave it in there for 30 minutes and it, it will be 100% charged. So, I mean, this thing charges fast. 
which when you when you have a device like this that you're kind of depending on to always be ready to go for the next project it, it's super awesome I, I i love that it charges fast form factor i already kind of told you how much i love being able to detach a keyboard and move this thing around if you're more of a creative guy than me you know setting it down like this and you know playing with the I hate how hard it is to get this pen out. Um, you know, playing around with the pen, writing is is fantastic. It, uh, it to me, I'm like I said, I'm not a pen guy, but it's as good as I could imagine it needing to be, and uh, I'm happy with that. But generally, just being able to have it set up where you can fold it up like this and go walk around and set it at a table, and it just basically looks like a notepad is awesome i mean that's that's what we've wanted out of surface devices all, all along they just never lasted as long as they should have and got warm and were a little disappointing to use so i've been pretty glowing so far and haven't said uh, much negative but now is the time for that i'm afraid so in addition to being a realtor i'm also a professional photographer and videographer although you might not uh, guess it based off of the quality and editing of this video uh, when it comes to creative use, this is not going to be your tool. Uh, I can open and edit photos in Lightroom uh, and Photoshop. I have a real life example. A couple days ago, I was uh, working with um, eight or nine uh, stacks of photos uh, from my A7S IV, and it was doable, but it was absolutely miserable. So those are larger files, about 75 megabytes. So it's uh, you know, it's, it's not an easy task for any computer, but on my MacBook, it would have just zoomed through it, no problem at all. Th this thing chugged along and it, it wasn't, I had to give up. I mean, it was just not, not an enjoyable experience. I did run DaVinci Resolve on here as well, and that is built natively for ARM. Uh, again, I don't know if it's just the GPU or CPU, it, it, it's not ready. I mean, it, it, it's slow, it sucks. Uh, so I will not be using this for any photo editing or video editing unless I got into a real pinch and just needed to knock something out quick. But um, this computer really, I would say, is more meant for the average person to be able to do business, work, consume media. It'd be perfect for a student, you know, taking notes, uh, you know, just kind of like an, as an everyday device. But if you, if you have a workflow that requires uh, you know, you to be able to kind of grind out a ton of photos or a long video, uh, you're going to probably want to go for a different computer. Now, that isn't specific to this Surface. It really is specific to all the new Snapdragon X Elite devices. They're just not quite set up to be strong enough to do some of those really demanding tasks. As far as recommendations that I have on this it, it, for buying considerations, uh, I, I would 100% recommend this device. I, I, I love it. it I, I dare, I would say that it's my favorite device ever. And I've owned a lot of computers, guys. I, it's ridiculous how many computers I've owned. This one's just special. And some of it's the form factor. Some of it is, you know, being able to detach the keyboard. But most of all, I just love that it's so small. And when I fold it up, I mean, nobody wouldn't know that I'm just carrying around a notebook. Um, that being said, I, I do have some very specific recommendations. If you were looking at buying one of these, go for the 32 gigabytes of memory. Uh, that way you'll get the higher end Snapdragon chip anyways, as well as the OLED panel. Uh, I don't buy computers with 16 gigs or less of memory anymore. It's just, we got too much stuff going on. I mean, a guy could fill up, you know, a, a roll full of Chrome tabs pretty easily nowadays. So that 32 gigabytes will make you not wonder what if I would have just spent an extra couple hundred bucks. Just do it right away the first time. You won't regret it. Uh, OLED is another must. You, you got to get the OLED panel. Uh, it just makes it so much more enjoyable to use. It feels just next generation. It's awesome. And then uh, the keyboard uh, and pen, of course, being optional, but I would say uh, get the keyboard for sure. You've seen me uh, gush about how much I like the Flex keyboards. So that'd be, of course, the one that I'd recommend, but you can certainly go pick up uh, one of the older versions of the keyboard that would still be compatible with this device were probably closer to like $170. I was expecting these ARM computers to be decent. Uh, for the most part, they've exceeded my expectations. Uh, I've always preferred Windows for my business type work. And it's just awesome to finally have one that doesn't get hot, battery lasts the whole time, and is still powerful enough to be able to do 90% of the things that I do. 
uh, the, the fan noise is non-existent for the most part for me. So, I mean, um, I can set this up and it doesn't feel like I'm, you know, just got this big beast in front of somebody. It's just very natural to show a presentation to somebody with something like this. So, uh, you know, if you have any questions on the device, feel free to leave a comment below. I love, uh, you know, seeing those, answering, responding to them. And, uh, you know, I'll kind of keep you up to speed on how this thing goes. But uh, I think the Surface Laptop 7 will probably be getting returned. And this will be the one that sits uh, in my passenger seat while I run around doing business stuff. So anyways, thank you for watching. Have a great day.